I recently started to read Breitbart.com. And I've been doing so because of all the attention given to Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon was the head of Breitbart News. Then he became head of Trump's uh, campaign. Now he has a high up position in the Trump administration. So I wanted to read the website that made him so notorious. And it, it's just been an interesting few days to a week. It's just a conventional website as far as I can tell. It's a news website with a strong right wing bend, but it's just very surprising that this is the website that has created this conservative revolution or this new conservative revolution that everyone's talking about. I was also surprised by the sense of victimhood, especially coming from a news outlet that's supposedly so anti-PC. There was always a sense of victimhood uh, being persecuted. And it's just a strange because people on the right are always accusing those on the left of, of always playing the victim, always screaming about racism and sexism. To see them do that in their own way there was kind of interesting. But going forward, because there's so much attack on the establishment on, Breit on Breitbart, uh, you know, they attack Democrats, they attack establishment Republicans. Breitbart is now part of the establishment. They are so tightly woven with this Trump campaign. And you get the sense that they're not going to attack Trump when Trump makes a misstep or makes several missteps. Are they going to be supporting him? Are they going to be trying to rationalize all his moves? Because in a way, if Trump is seen as a failure, Breitbart, who is going to be supporting a lot of these failed policies, will also take some of that heat as well. Plus, they built up, as far as I can tell, their reputation as being outsiders. How will they deal with being on the inside? So I think it's going to be very interesting. We'll see how this all plays out.